Doctor, thanks for joining us today. We're talking about advice to have a healthy heart muscle, and the first thing that jumps out of that is you think of muscle, you think of your biceps, your triceps, your quads. We don't normally think of a heart as a muscle. Why do we call it a muscle? Well, it turns out that the biceps, for example, which is a muscle, has what we call contractile proteins so that the muscle will contract and relax. So you can bend your arm and straighten your arm, and the muscles are contracting and relaxing. And in addition, there are chemicals in the muscles that make it do that. The heart is exactly the same as the bicep with some minor differences. There are proteins in there that actually cause the contraction of the heart and the relaxation of the heart. The chemicals can be measured and they're the same that are found in the muscles of the arm or the leg. So in essence, it's a muscle. Okay. What happens to that muscle during a heart attack? Well, several things happen, but the, probably the easiest way to visualize it is that with a heart attack, it's implied that the artery supplying blood to the muscle is blocked or occluded. And when that happens, the muscle doesn't get oxygen and it doesn't get other nutrients. And one thing that contractile protein needs is oxygen. So if it's deprived of oxygen, it can no longer contract, which means it can no longer beat. And this usually doesn't happen to the entire heart, but a certain segment of it. And so you'll have a weakness develop in the muscle because it's not getting enough blood, which contains oxygen, glucose, and all of those things. How does congestive heart failure affect the heart muscle? Well, it may be the other way around that the heart muscle produces congestive heart failure. If the heart muscle is weakened, say from a blocked artery from a heart attack so that it's not getting enough oxygen, it can't contract as well, it won't in turn supply enough oxygen to the muscles so that the muscles of the body can contract or so that the brain can get enough oxygen to function. When this happens, when the heart is unable to meet the demands of the body, that's called heart failure. And many of the causes of heart failure are due to weakness of the heart muscle, whether it be from some inherited disorder that affects the muscle, whether it's due to a blockage in the arteries, whether it's due to something such as rheumatic fever affecting the heart valves, these can all weaken the muscle, which can produce, produce the state of congestive heart failure. What does the term weak heart mean? Well, to me, it simply means that the heart is unable to contract enough to meet the body's demands. Uh, and what happens with a so-called weak heart is that the heart will generally enlarge in an effort to uh, make up for the weakness. Uh, it'll contain more blood. The pressures in the heart will go up. And so to me, a weak heart would imply an enlarged heart, elevated pressures within the heart, and the inability to supply enough nutrients to the rest of the body. What do things like high blood pressure or high cholesterol levels actually do to the heart muscle itself? Well, that's a great question. As you know, high blood pressure and high cholesterol are major risk factors for the development of heart disease. So we'll, we'll take them separately and then maybe together. High blood pressure uh, increases the pressure that the heart muscle has to pump against. So this would be similar to trying to lift a light weight or a heavy weight. Mm -hmm. As the muscle is pumping against the higher pressure in the body, which is high blood pressure, what happens is the muscle will begin to thicken and then the heart itself will enlarge. And so you have thick heart muscle, which is not as efficient as regular uh, thickness muscle and then the heart enlarges. And so as the blood pressure goes up, the heart enlarges, the muscle gets thicker, and then you develop heart failure. With high cholesterol, which is one of the risk factors for hardening of the arteries, you actually develop plaque within the arteries that carry oxygen to the heart muscle. And so as the plaque develops in these arteries, they can block the arteries and cause a heart attack. They can partially block the arteries and cause heart pain, such as angina or if you get enough blockage in enough of the heart arteries, you can actually weaken the muscle so much that you develop a complete state of heart failure. How does cigarette smoking or other nicotine exposure affect the heart muscle? Well, cigarette smoking, either from the individual smoking the cigarette himself or from secondhand smoke, does several things. First of all, 
we know that cigarette smoke uh, uh, affects the blood cells in the body which carry the oxygen so that you get what we call carboxyhemoglobin where the hemoglobin in the red blood cells can't bind with oxygen. And so if you get enough of this, you're simply starving your body for oxygen. In addition, nicotine causes constriction of the arteries so that at the same time you don't have enough oxygen, you're making it more difficult to get blood flow through the arteries to the heart muscle. And so again, you're starving the heart muscle for oxygen, which can lead to heart failure or heart attack. We hear about aerobic exercise. How does aerobic exercise change the heart muscle? I think the easiest way to think of that is that aerobic exercise improves the efficiency of the heart and the circulation. So that with long-term aerobic exercise, your arteries, which supply the blood to the muscles, the veins, which return the blood back to the heart, they become more efficient so that you can do more work at a lower heart rate, a lower blood pressure, which means that the heart needs less oxygen. So like any pump, it becomes more efficient. It can deliver more output with less energy cost. And this is what aerobic exercise does. It's a superb way uh, to protect your heart and uh, lead to a healthier heart. With respect to aerobic exercise, for the average middle-aged adult, what do you recommend? Well, the current recommendation is uh, at least 30 minutes of a moderate degree of exercise most days or all days of the week. Now, uh, moderate exercise to me means 30 minutes and that you would be, say for example, walking at a rate of uh, a mile in 20 minutes or a mile in 30 minutes. So that if you're able to, over 30 minutes, walk one and a half miles a day, you're starting to get into that uh, uh, vigorous uh, mode of exercise. It's, it's twin, exercise is twin, nutrition. What changes to uh, eating habits and what will eating healthy do to make for a stronger heart muscle? Well, one of the major uh, forms of um, uh, nutritional changes that is, is being promoted by the Heart Association and the cardiology organizations now is, for example, restriction of the sodium or salt in the average diet. We know that the number one uh, health problem in this country is high blood pressure affecting 60 million individuals. And one of the factors that leads to this epidemic of high blood pressure is the tremendous amounts of salt or sodium uh, that people take in in their diet. Probably the average person is taking in four to 10 times as much sodium a day as they need. The Heart Association is currently recommending 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day, where the body only needs about 200 milligrams, and we may be taking in 10,000 milligrams. You say, well, how does the average person know how much sodium they're getting in? Well, what you have to do is start reading the labels on all of the food products, and this is one big change that's occurred recently. You can pick up a box of cereal, a loaf of bread, a snack food, you can turn it over, look at the label, it'll tell you the serving size, the calories in the serving size, the milligrams of sodium, and you just sort of mentally keep track of that and you can start cutting down the sodium in your diet. That's one thing nutrition can do. The other thing nutrition can do is limit the amount of cholesterol in the diet so that you're eating more fruits and vegetables and snacks such as that and less of the heavily fatted foods, uh, which tend to increase uh, cholesterol. Very well. Thanks for your time today, Doctor. It was a pleasure.